you know, you could be creating the next generation of musicians. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, I think we've cr created enough generations of, of musicians. To be I think so, yeah. <laughs> Some say Stone Rock is a bastard child of the 60s, 70s and Sabbath. Whilst there's plenty of weed worship, what these bands really share is a slow, savage, sonic space where the riff reigns supreme. Legend has it, aggressive, progressive players like Caius, Fu Manchu, Sleep and Monster Magnet created their own versions of the fuzzed out, tuned down, sludgy sound in the 1990s. The long, slow burn of this music since then has flamed up brighter than ever in the last few years, as a whole new generation of artists and fans fall under the spell of stoner rock all over again. Stoner rock is an interesting one because I was thinking about it and I'm like, there is a weird, one way to look at it could be almost like all these bands are like fucking trees in the forest and they share the same forest, the different plants. They're different trees, yeah. but they've got kind of bristly arms. They're really all about like riffs, which is like the trunk. I feel like yeah. I should just smoke. Yeah, you should. I actually kind of feel like you should probably smoke now. Uh, YouTube, you should probably yeah. should probably smoke now. Okay. Oh look, no, you really <laughs> no. That obviously we weren't just talking about smoking weed, and there was obviously nothing gestured just then about just weed. What do you think? It, yeah, what do you think it means? What do you think? Why is it such a beloved thing? It's it's a uh, working man or anthem by Rush. You can describe the whole thing. What's a Rush song? Really? Yeah. You no, know, it's like it's it's more honest, I think, than what's going on in music. That's you know such multi-million dollar, you know. It's blues children. It's the children of blues. It's stolen black music. Most roads lead back to Robert Johnson. From there, like to Skip James and you know and things like that. I mean, that's that's some heavy shit. Times are harder than ever been before. And that's what's weird about Stoner Rock. In a way, it's all stolen '70s music and '60s music, from Budgie to Sabbath to to Sewer Lord Baltimore. Do all roads lead back to Sabbath? Yeah, for me. The beginning and the end. The, you can only, you tr you trust the first five Black Sabbath records. Right? Nothing else. For all you kids at home, these are the guys that created the drop tuning sound that's defined uh, metal. Creating that sound was actually a bit of an accident. Well, one of the things was I took the ends of my fingers off and uh, and it made it easier to to play with the lighter strings. But um, also we were. From from the time we wrote our first songs, we were trying to get heavier and heavier, make the whole sound because of just there was bass guitar, lead guitar, and, and drums basically as the, as the rhythm sections. And before that, all or a lot of bands had keyboard players or rhythm guitar players. So um, we made the sound bigger, you know, by uh, lowering the sound, lowering the the, the the tuning, and so it gave it a bit more umph. We didn't know how to tune up anyway. <laughs> no, we had, actually, it's, it's not far off. There was not, there was not much to tune up to in them days. You know, you didn't, you had, the <laughs> and we had a problem tuning. Yeah, especially, drums, right? yeah, <laughs> especially tuning uh, were tuned down. You know, it was hard to keep it in tune then because you didn't have all the tunematic bridges and whatever else. As well as having to tune down to sort of match his playing, um, you were also one of the first bass guitarists to use a wah. Is that correct? Yes, yes, in the beginning of um, NIB. Um, I'm not sure how it came about. I think it was, how did it come about? Was it Roger Bain uh, or me? You probably had one in the war. Yeah, I think I had one. I had to use it somewhere, <laughs> so. <laughs> they let me use it on the beginning of NIB. Well, then why not? <laughs> and then I've used one ever since except on the last 10 albums. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to do with the community as well? I think it's definitely a group of people that are, are maybe closer to the spiritualism we all seek than your average person that's nine to five. And I think that's what's kind of good about like, maybe like, you know, like High on Fire and this kind of music. There is all this depth to it. There's like embroidery, like musical embroidery, but it's still got like a punk rock heart underneath it. Like, yeah. That's, that's our roots, definitely. Like all three of us now have punk, punk rock dudes. Yeah. yeah, 
but we're all like got to a point where we're progressive players, you know. That's kind of where the whole sleep thing came from when we went three piece. I wanted to play solos. I didn't want to just play punk rock anymore. I wanted to play fucking Sabbathy fucking riffs, but heavy as fuck and put real solos and you know not do what everybody else was doing at the time because at the time no one was fucking doing that. You know, yeah. it was like us and Caius on the other side of the fucking planet. You know, it's not only yeah, Caius. 400 miles south from us. <laughs> really, I think there is a lot to be said for the environment that bands and artists come from. Mm. And, uh, you know, bands that were from New York or Manchester or Jamaica or, um, you know, Seattle. You can't help but absorb. Yeah, you just kind of are uh, an extension of your environment. We're, we were from the middle of the desert. Caius is, you know, has been a part of your whole adult life. I mean, what, what did you kind of set out to do? I think our goal was to, to play a couple parties and get some free beer. Yeah. <laughs> Good goal. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's evolved quite a bit. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get into this uh, to, to associate with any particular brand or style or names. I mean, we got into this to make music and play music for people who love music. We're just music freaks. I mean, we love, we have a, that's what we do. I mean, that's... We're lifers. <laughs> We're in too deep to quit now. I just want to, you know, be happy making music. That's the only thing that's really made me happy in my life. I think I mean, I've been happy at other times too, but I mean, that's that's what has motivated me all of my life to just to make music. And we're lucky enough to make it with us, with each other at this particular point, which has been a joy. Probably all got the same things to say. Um, we're lucky to still be able to be able to do it. Uh, you know, after after so long. You know, when you get into that rhythm, that you just can't stop riffing on that's right. called that's the fucking that power of groove on this new record i call it the bounce Beautiful. or the thump, or the thump. <laughs> <laughs> what's more important wine women or song hmm song song because if you got the song then you get you the wine and the women <laughs> 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 Name Stoner Rock. Um, it doesn't really sort of. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Isn't anyway. it? Yeah, yeah. it got to a stage a while back where it's like oh, Stoner Rock is a ridiculous term because it's all just good heavy rock music. But I don't mind if people want to lump us in with the Stoner Rock category. That's fine. I mean, we don't we don't smoke weed. Yeah. But, uh, you know. <laughs> Our mums are listening. And yeah, yeah, this is true. <laughs> but it evokes a sort of sludginess and a texture, I guess. Yeah, maybe what it's about. That's what I mean. I don't mind yeah. being lumped in with that because it, it's a genre that. You know, that's some of the greatest bands in the world. I asked the guys from Monster Magnet once, they said, I just never liked the label Stoner Rock. It feels more metal. Yeah. It's metal. <laughs> metal. Metal, metal lives forever. No, Stoner Rock just seemed to be like, it was, it, it, was, it was a really good word to label those, label people as lazy. I think it is. And I think it's it like kind of says it's boring when you guys are kind of awesome and complex yeah, and cool. The thing implies yeah. like sleepy. It you does. Know? I ain't sleepy. <laughs> You're sweaty. No, I'm sweaty. And yeah. I'm alive. We're cocaine rock. <laughs> we were on tour with them for a month, and it was when Dixie Day from Weed Eater was in the band. And I walked in the back room twice to him getting a blowjob. Once was with a woman that I had slept with. <laughs> yeah, no, they they are pretty relentless. They made me drink um, Jack Daniels. It was like 10 a.m. You're, 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 this is a problem, isn't it? Sorry, it's you're it's trouble. It's a rock show. Everything you could fucking think of, like all the 80s children that were on tour, we were <laughs> fucked. We were <laughs> fucked up, dude. And like, I had so much fun doing it. Like, I wouldn't take it back for, I swear to God, if you gave me $5 million right now, I'd rather have my life experience with like people like that than the $5 million. Came over to Europe in 2002 with them. And it was a pirate ship. It was completely pirate pirateish on that yeah. ship. And that's yeah. awesome. That's <laughs> great. We had a way too much fun. Enough tough, enough fun for like ten tours. Everybody's just so funny who are in these bands. Like it's comedy the entire time. I remember for C and I he got just losing it. Sleep back then. I've known the I hate God guys since I was like Probably like 19 or 20 oh, wow. or like, when we first got sleep together, we had just been, we were as best as death before that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I met Jimmy Bowers and Joe. He's a dude, man. But what about corrosion and conformity? Like that's pretty I rad know, peppers back with that. Yeah. Man, I, when I was a kid, uh, I got that corrosion animosity album. And then I got eye for an eye later on a cassette tape. And <laughs> I loved that shit. And then I kind of, you know, the, 
I I'm, like Deliverance. I love Deliverance. I do too, but I never got into it till like way later, when when Pepper actually joined later on. I didn't really know. I didn't know it was corrosion when I first started hearing. It's the, different, hey. Yeah. Oh, it's completely different. Dude, like, what I, yeah. that? Like what the fuck? And then someone's all it's corrosion and conformity. Well, no, really. That's a, it's so apple. Well, it's different. Yeah, yeah. It's apples and oranges. Yeah. One corrosion wood burner and one corrosion animosity. You know, <laughs> like I don't know. But it's good to evolve, you know. It is. I shit. I've done that with. Everything. Every band I've been in. Well, sleep kind of just keeps doing its thing. A lot of people don't get sleep, but it's it's like we can do whatever we want. And people still love it. Oh yeah, people still love it. And the people who don't love it, like, don't fucking go. <laughs> Why are you even fucking critiquing it if you don't understand it? The ultimate Stone of Rock album, Sleep Jerusalem. Oh, absolutely. And that's it. That's the only one you ever need to listen to absolutely. if you want it perfectly. Like, Can't hate on that. Said, ch ch chills up your spine, or it's supposed to totally confuse you. And that's really the good things in life do that, like, you know. And it was good. I've got this um, clip of you that I took of the Dragon on solo, and then it kind of ends. Amazing. That's my favorite part of the thing. It's just really funny. You know, it's good to kind of see people moved by things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that too. I try not to feed my ego too much, you know. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> no, it's easy to do, you know. I do. I'm a really fortunate person, but I worked really hard to like get where I'm at. But, you know. Humility is important. Say, yeah. Humility is really important. But when people say stuff like that, it makes you really appreciate what you're doing because you're actually doing something in the world that means something to people. To watch Matt Pike win a Grammy or to watch Matt oh, win a Grammy. I got all like emotional. Wow, what a trip. To see my friends not have to work. You know, that's the real thing, isn't beautiful, it? Beautiful, beautiful. Sleep should be getting what they get, right? And what they've got, you know? I'm, they're, yeah. they're beyond, the truth to me, like what you asked a question about, like what's different, what's different about the fans? It's it's truth. It's 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 purity. It's not uh, if it's thought up, it's thought up about the like even us thinking only about weed. It's because it it is and was and will always be our lives. Yeah. You know what is? I, yeah. I I'm as deep into weed as I was when the band started. I smoke just as much. I I have grown, we, me and an ex of mine, this, the woman that the song Weedy Woman's about, dedicated two whole houses in Madison, Wisconsin to growing for five years. So, you know, the, the truth and honesty of this music, I think is why wonderfully it's gotten b b bigger and bands like High and Fire and Mastodon and even us huge. these days, yeah. Yeah. not, well, I don't think we're huge, but we can, we make money. Yeah. I make more money going on the road than I do working. You can be an artist. Just, you know. But you can be an artist. Yes, exactly. You've got the freedom to be an artist because that's all anyone, if you're a real artist, it's not, and, and this is the reality of the touring world, that whole dream, yeah. just because the, the whole dream of a bathtub full of money and cocaine and chicks doesn't exist anymore, the best part about that is all that's left are the people who just do it because they love it. And I've interviewed so many bands the last few years just talking about, look, it's a struggle. And there, there's basically two modes. It's either we're barely getting by, but we fucking love it. Yeah. Or we're finally making money and we fucking love it. And nothing has really changed right. in that this is all that matters. And that holy place is all that matters well, in the thing. Yeah. Music to me is getting yeah. off. If yeah. If I can wonderfully make a hundred other people get off in that night, or ten thousand people, or whatever, a little sex, a little sex on stage. I, I want to share, okay? so, share something important. Yes, um, I like it was in Sri Lanka, formerly Salon, when one of us had to get one thousand brown M and M's to fill a brandy glass. <laughs> Or Ozzy wouldn't go on stage that night. So, Jeff Beck pops his head round the door and mentions oh there's a little s sweet shop on the edge of town. I caught, uh, it, it was a tree bat, it was about that big. Yeah. And I put it in a bird cage and escaped the cage. And it was like that <laughs> and thin. It got out. And it was sitting next to my friend and I was doing a bong hit. <laughs> and I was all, hit <laughs> like a mall. Whoa! Dude. Don't move. The bat is like right next to you, like right now. Stop, don't move. And then I, dude, I had to catch it and like throw it out the window, but I caught a tree bat for, I, I had it for about a week.